Today, we'll teach you 10 football training drills that you should definitely be doing because not only will these drills make sure that you train with variety, they'll also keep you fit and ready for game day. The first drill is called Touch in the Box. It's designed to help you control a loose ball in the box so you can turn around and score without too many touches. And you can do that by building a square of some cones. Then you stand in the middle with your back to the goal. You uh, put a ball in the air, you take a touch, you turn, and you finish it off without looking up too much or taking too many touches on the ball. Now the key is that when you make the touch and you turn, you look up at the goal with the corner of your eye. So you can then focus on looking down on the ball again, make sure you get a sweet strike, and basically put it in the corner of the net. No dwelling, just look up, know where the goal is, hit the target, that's it. Secondly, you want to practice left foot familiarization. It's a key ability in today's modern game, and it's one of those things that can really set you apart from your teammates. So for the familiarization and the process of making my weak foot used to how the ball actually feels, well, I started juggling and then forced myself to incorporate my left foot at at least every other touch. So right, left, right, left, right, left, and so on. And as I got more confident with that, I started to also incorporate using my left foot even more. That could be right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, and so on. Basically, to force my left foot to get used to the weight of the ball and how it feels when it moves around, how much force I need to put on it. Now, after that, I put the ball on the ground and then did a lot of little zigzag dribbles moving around all over the pitch just to get myself used to how it feels to dribble, primarily using my left foot. It's really awkward at first, but it quickly catches on. And thirdly, you can be training your no-look passing. That's a good way to confuse your opponent, spice up your game, and who knows, maybe look a little bit cooler than everyone else. But Jay, how do I get good at this? How do I train it? Well, the only real way to get good at no-look passing is to actually do it, just like with anything else out there when you train football. And the best way is to simply just go to the pitch and start doing no-look passes at different targets. Could be small goals or whatever you want it to be. But the key here is basically just go out, start stationary, just have a target, no-look pass the ball in. Once you've done that, you can maybe start moving a little bit, no look past the ball in. And once you're consistently hitting the targets, you can maybe move on to slightly more advanced, maybe longer passes where you identify a target further away and you just... Wow, I actually hit the target there. But anyway, you also get that consistently on target and maybe then you start taking it into training sessions or when you're playing around with your mates. Start with the easy passes and identify, is this something you actually want to add to your game. And if it is, well, just remember again that it's all about trusting your body, muscle memory, your coordination, that it's guarded even though you're not looking. So training is the key. Next up is the Trident Turn Drill, which is a very useful drill to help you improve your close control if you have a friend with you on the pitch. So you have three cones right here in front of you. Phil is standing there with the ball in front of me and I have to run from down here. Behind me is also a small gate, but we're gonna get back to that in a bit. So I'm gonna run to the first cone, get the ball, first time pass, I'm gonna run back here, second cone, gonna run back to the middle, third cone, I'm just gonna keep doing that until I get... So basically, you're just gonna keep running to the cones, passing the ball back first time, or with a touch if you have to, until your teammate calls turn. And you basically just step over the ball or take a touch and then you have to run down and through the gate in order to complete the drill. Take turns, do that as many times as you can and improve your close control. Now let's have a look at what I like to call the square of pain. Awesome name by the way. You want to keep your fitness high so don't skip this unless you want to skip the second half of the match as well. Here you have a stepping ladder, you have a big square, the red cones, and a small square in one of the corners, the bright green cones. So you basically run through the stepping ladder, then you go at 80% round the big square, then you come back and you take the ball to go through the small square. And the idea here is that you basically work on your focus and your technique while you're really in the red zone. So push through, push yourself hard, and remember that a winner is just another loser who never gave up. 
Now it's time for the off the ball trident, because if you're a midfielder and you need to play yourself out of a tight situation, you need to train your movement off the ball as well. You have two cones relatively close to each other, one out wide, and then you have Phil in the middle with a cone or an opponent in front of him. So the drill goes like this, you pass the ball to Philip, you of course move to the other side, you get the ball back, move again, get the ball back, little directional touch, take it back past the cone, and then when you get the ball here, or at any point where you decide, you can see Phil is relatively far from his opponent, you pass him the ball, you call turn, so he can open up, then you make the deep run, you call for the ball, and then you're away. So basically, it looks like this. Yep. 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 Turn. Deep. Next up is the one-step run-up, which is a solid drill to practice a short, but also more match-like run-up when you shoot. It's important that you execute this drill with a very quick, snappy motion to catch the defender and the keeper on the back foot. Now, I've set up the drill using two sets of cones. One where you cut inside and curl the ball in the far corner, and one on the other side where you cut out and shoot across the box. And here, it's very important that you teach yourself to have a quick, snappy motion, keeping the ball inside the second cone. Because if you get across that, it means you need too many steps and the defender is gonna tackle you. And in all essence, what you want to end up with is something like this. We can't miss the offset cone shuffle since fitness is so important in football. And this one will also keep your change of direction up to speed. Pun intended. Set up two rounds of slightly offset cones that you're gonna shuffle in between while you touch every single cone with your hands as you go. It's important here to really bend down in your knees to start working and pumping up your thighs, make them stronger. And basically, when you run through, you're going to take the ball and shuffle all the way through the cones on your way back. And then when you're done, you walk slowly to the other side and then you do another one. Now, the next drill is, for lack of better name, um, scattered cones, which is designed for your tight space dribbling and your fast decision making. Actually, it is <laughs> as simple as it looks, but that doesn't mean that it's gonna be easy. And again, try to make this as match relevant as possible, dribbling through the cones in this mazy minefield, using your full array of skills, rolls, and little flicks, basically everything you have in your locker. And yes, you can start slow, but try to go as hard as you possibly can, without, of course, losing the ball. And if you make yourself go a different route through the maze every time, you're gonna force your brain to make a decision all the time based on where on earth the cones are around you. And that, my friends, you guessed it, it's gonna help you in a match. Lastly, we have the offside breaker, made to help you make better deep runs to, you guessed it, break the offside trap. So basically, you set up a defensive line of cones, the blue cones, you set up a square in the middle for your teammate and you set up a cone right in front of you. That is your opponent. So basically you start off by dribbling towards the opponent, you take a touch to the side and you pass the ball towards the middle to fill. After that, you're gonna accelerate in order to make a deep run, but you have to be wary because if you just keep sprinting, just go towards the goal, eventually you're gonna be offside and that sucks. You have to beat the offside line. So because Phil has to get the ball, he has to round his opponent in the square, well, you also have to time your run. So when you get to the defensive line, you basically run a little wide, and then when you reach the line, instead of running deep, you basically run along the line in order to stay on side. Then you look up, you meet Phil's gaze, you call for the ball, he calls for the pass, makes the deep pass, and you go and score the goal. Do this five times, then switch it up, so you both learn how to time that deep run. But guys, do you have any other training drills that you think everyone should be doing? Let us know as always in the comment section right down below. I also hope that you enjoyed this video and learned some new drills that you can add to your training. And if you did, you might as well hit that subscribe button with the notifications on. And then also consider checking out our store if you're looking for some fresh new football gear. And with that said, I'll be signing off. See you next time. Cheerio.